Looking for a painting tutorial for beginners? In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make this cotton candy. For all the best lessons on painting with vibrant color with acrylics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss a thing. All right, so in previous tutorial videos, I told you that last year I did an awesome collaboration with Boston area interior designers Honey and & Fitz, and we decided to do a whole painting series dedicated to our favorite summer treats. And this cotton candy was one of those paintings. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did it. And if you need a materials list, just download my quick start guide to acrylic painting that's right below this video and let's dive in. All right, so we have our cotton candy here. We've got our pencil outline to start with. And the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is just create a background to get rid of most of the white on the paper. So I think what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna do a background around the cotton candy. Again, you could totally just do a background before you even do the pencil outline. I just happen to have the pencil outline here. And I'm gonna do a blue background today. So I have on my palette Cornacridone Magenta, Pyrrole Orange, Yellow Medium, Phthalo Blue, Ultramarine, and Purple. So if you want my full materials list, it is below this video. Um, Ultramarine's not on that list, but you can certainly add it to your palette. I love it, it's kind of a nice cool blue. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different, and I'm gonna water down the paint for the background just so we get this fun watercolor texture, maybe add a little bit of white to lighten it up. And I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and I'm gonna go fairly quickly. Just adding some more water. It's kind of fun to do this, like a little wash on the back of the paper or the background of the paper rather. Just something a little different. You can see the brush strokes. And you can always go over this background a little bit later. I just like the color we've got here. I don't use ultramarine a ton in my painting, so when I do, it's kind of fun and different. Just quickly covering in the background. Kind of looks like clouds, I think that's why I went for that today. Since cotton candy itself definitely looks like clouds, and I like that you can see some of the brush strokes in the back, I just think that that's fun. Just super, super simple. And now I'm gonna wash the brush off and I'm going to fill in the cotton candy part as well, but I'm gonna do that with pink. I didn't wanna put the blue all the way behind it in this case, because if we do that, putting the pink over the top, it's transparent. So it would have looked purple and we want it to feel really pink. So I'm gonna go in just with a deeper pink. I know it's pretty dark as far as cotton candy is concerned, but this is gonna lay a really good foundation for the rest of our painting and help us get that glow that we want. So this is different than some of my other process. Sometimes I'll do an outline first on the white paper, but I just wanted to get the white covered up. What that does is it helps you have a better sense of your values, your lightness and your darkness in your painting, and then we can just build back up to shadows and highlights later. So now we've got that fun magenta color filled in here. I'm gonna give that just like a second to dry. And we'll take this down here. We're gonna change the paper cone colors as we go, but it'll be good to just have it filled in. And then we'll get some of that pink glow coming through from the back too. Okay, so we've got this like two part background situation. Looks pretty flat, but we are gonna bring it to life. So what I'm gonna do first is I am gonna do a darker outline around the cotton candy. I like to outline almost everything I do because it just grounds it in space. It kind of makes it feel um, a little bit more intentional. And then when you get to the edges, the edges are a little bit more like solid instead of um, kind of lighter, whatever. So we're gonna keep going. 
And I'm gonna do a pink outline, add maybe a little bit of orange. The outline, you'll see, it'll help a little bit later just to make it look like it is solid in space. And it doesn't have to be right at the edge of where the lines are, like it's okay that some of the pink is bleeding out. That's okay. Just trust me. In most paintings, at least almost every painting that I do, it's so important to start darker than you think you need to go. When you do that, you're going to allow yourself to build enough depth to build forward and make it look like something is highlighted or has texture. So let's keep going. I'm going to grab a bigger brush and I just want to fill in a bunch of this darker cotton candy and then we'll bring it forward. Layers are important. So we'll start with some pink, maybe even add a little bit more orange, maybe a touch of white. And we're going to have the right side be the shadow side and the left side make it look like the light is hitting it on that side. So bringing in some of these darker colors. They're not too dark, but they are going to help us build the shadow. And this is why the outline does help just so we have like a boundary. And you can pull the brush strokes around like around so it looks round like it came off the spinny thing or you can do a little bit more texture if you want to. We'll bring in a little bit of white. And just have, have fun, especially in the beginning because we can define the actual cotton candy later. Let's bring in a little bit more white. Bring in some pink. And we just want multiple shades of pink. We don't, it doesn't need to be a solid block of like baby pink. We definitely want different shades. We'll bring in even more white maybe down here. Bring in some of this lighter pink. So again, this is a little different than some of my other painting processes. Like sometimes I will find the highlights and the shadows first, but cotton candy is so fluffy. There aren't really too many highlights and shadows, but we did bring in the shadows on the right side. All right, and making sure that we're letting the, the brush feel fluffy, not trying to blend everything so perfectly. This is just the first layer, so we'll let, we'll let this dry and then we'll come back to add even more depth. You'll see I am on the left side, I'm breaking where that line is so we get that fluffy edge around it. And while we let this upper part dry, let's go down to the paper. So if you watched the snow cone tutorial, I actually did paper just like this on the bottom. And what we did is we started a little darker than we thought we needed to. Which is exactly what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take some ultramarine and some magenta. I'm going to make a nice purple. Maybe a little darker. You have to go darker so that you can build the highlights forward and really create depth. Very important. Okay. 
fill this in. Letting some of the pink peek through on the edge. And then right away bringing in some white. And it's almost like, you know when you get cotton candy and that little stick cone is twisted rolled paper? So I'm gonna bring in some of the ridges on that too. So that has a little bit of texture. And then we'll bring one more layer, even more white, and we'll go right over the top of that. It's my really easy trick for just creating more depth is just do a couple variations of the same color in different values and it will help you create that depth illusion. Okay, so now we've got that. We might come back to that later, but we still have this kind of big fluffy mass up here and we wanna make sure that we are capturing really the fluffiness and that the bulk of cotton candy, right? It's big, it's round, we want to capture that. So the best way to do that is gonna be to keep going with even more layers. So let's go back to that brush we were using. Get it nice and cleaned off and dried. We did use a lot of water at the beginning for that fun watercolor effect, but now we do want the brushes to be dry. If you thin the water or thin the paint down too much, it'll just kind of slide around. The paper won't absorb it. And we don't want that. So add a little bit more magenta to our palette. And we could even see down here, there might be some darker shadows that lean more towards purple. So let's take the magenta over here. We'll add a touch of our ultramarine blue. Get a nice deeper red violet. And we'll bring that in here. And experiment with different brush strokes going in different directions. See what works, see what doesn't work. I just want it to have dimension. Okay, so now still pulling that back in. It feels pretty dark. We do want to lighten that up a little bit, so let's take a little bit of white. And come in from the left side. Acrylics do dry darker even as you're painting with them. So that's why it's important to keep bringing in lighter values and layering where we have to. Sometimes it can feel tedious, but painting is not a linear process. It's not like it just keeps getting better and better and better and then it's done and it's perfect. Sometimes you have to go around in circles Correct mistakes. Okay. Continuing to bring in some of the white. And you can see all in here how even some of like those broken brush strokes, you can see through them and it's creating this depth and texture, which we wouldn't have if we just went straight for this light pink color, right? Coming in with some darker pink again, going right over those 
shadowy areas, but just with a slightly lighter pink. Try your best not to try to blend everything. Leave some of the brush strokes a little more open. Bringing in some white. And continuing to get even lighter towards the edges. Can definitely be a slow process but it is worth it to build up that texture and the layers okay so now to make it look like the light is hitting it even more what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pink that has some yellow in it just for some extra pink variation okay so I'm going to wipe this off. We don't want any blue on the brush. That'll tr have it start getting muddy. We don't want that. And we could just switch to a different brush too, just to make sure it's really super clean. And we'll take some pink, magenta. We'll take some white. And we'll just take a tiny touch of yellow. So just going to create a little bit of a warmer, a warmer pink, slightly different color. All right, and let's see how that works. Bring this in over here. This just has this warming effect to it. All right, bring some of this in. And it might be too yellow. We might add some pink back over the top, but we just needed some variation in the pink. We didn't want the whole thing to just be one shade or one type of pink. And again, the more layers you do, the more depth it will have and the more it will look like it's actually round. Maybe add a little bit of magenta here. And just going really lightly. If the brush gets a little too gunky, you can always wash it off, choose a different brush. I would stick with some larger brushes right now just so if you're using a tiny little brush, you're gonna end up with little tiny brush strokes in there, which you probably don't want. So we'll add a little bit of white in there. And test out different brushes too. Like different brushes are gonna make different brush strokes, are gonna do different things. Maybe add in another little bit of darker pink. All right, and now come back again with the white over here. Layers are everything, especially with acrylics. You can layer them, the acrylics I mean, you can build them up. So that's what I love doing. And even something as simple as cotton candy that doesn't have a lot of like edges or noticeable texture, you can create some beautiful texture just with the paint. And it ends up being really pretty. And you get all those layers that you've been building this whole time, you can see all of them underneath. All right, so just bringing to the edge 
the white. We want to be able to see the pink edges over here. We want to see less of them over here. Now really go in with some white. Just dipping right into the white, going over what we've done, create kind of like little pockets of highlights. All right, and now let's go back to the bottom. So we'll go back to that cone there. So it's purple, but I think I want to pull forward some warmer colors too right on top. So maybe some yellows, some oranges. Let's see how we can do it. So let's take some white and we'll mix a little bit of our pink that we've been using just so it feels cohesive. Add a little bit of yellow, touch of orange. The orange is a good choice. It's next to magenta red on the color wheel. So I know it's gonna look kind of nice down here. Let's see if it works. So let's come right down here and then the purple can just peek through underneath as a shadow. And don't be afraid to let there be those gaps. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended as always. Add some white, add some yellow make a lighter version, we're just having fun. Bring it down from the left. That's where the light is coming from in this painting. And now I'm gonna wipe off the excess paint, really come in there with a bunch more white. and add what's gonna feel like highlights. And even go straight into the white. You might have to let this dry for a minute so that the white highlight will stick out. We can definitely see some texture on the stick holding the cotton candy, right? Maybe even go all the way to the edge. And I do want to brighten up the background too. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bigger brush. I'm going to take a brush like this, nice flat brush. I have a ton of these. So I recommend just getting a bunch. These are just um, Blick brush sets. Just buy a bunch of them. These are really useful. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to take actually the rest of this white and just see what we have mixed up in here. Maybe add like a touch of blue. Maybe I'll use the phthalo blue from over here. And just do a much lighter blue right over the top. Kind of going for like this cloud look. And you can keep that watercolor look if you want to, but I wanted to just add another layer to the background. And you can do a solid color. You can do variations. I like the, the texture of the paint. And you can go right up to the edge of the cotton candy. Letting the brush strokes shine through, covering up as much or as little as the previous background as you want. I just like this billowy, fluffy texture we have going on with the cotton candy and the background.
let there be those gaps in the paint. It's happening because I'm just spreading the paint thin. It's not that the paint is drying, it's just that I don't have a lot of paint left here and I'm just kind of spreading it as far as I can, but I like that texture in this case. If you don't like that texture, you just need to put more paint on your palette. It's not that the paint is drying, you just, we don't have enough paint on our brush, but I like the texture, so I'm doing it on purpose. All right. So this is a little bit different than I usually do, but just kind of nice and soft and fun. And you can see there's a lot of texture going on in here, different colors, lots of texture. I do wanna add just some last minute highlights. So maybe we will add a little bit more white to our palette and just bring some last white highlights from the left hand side. And maybe even just with my small brush, oops, bringing in some highlights over here. And you could experiment with a small brush. I recommend keeping the bigger brush just for the larger texture areas, but right here at the end, just for some texture going in a different direction. Texture we wouldn't otherwise have. And again, cotton candy can be as smooth or not as you want. All right. And that is our cotton candy. All right, so now I wanna hear from you. Tell me one thing you learned about painting with vibrant color from this tutorial video. And to dive even further into my painting process and to learn even more about painting with vibrant color with me, I wanna invite you to join my painting workshops. They are one subject workshops that dive into all the different steps of the painting process. You can find those below this video in a link. If you like this tutorial, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and share it with your other color loving painting friends. And be sure to watch these other painting tutorials right here and I will see you in the next video.